Hello everyone, this is What's Up, and uh, this video will be SMTPU Toroid 1. SMTPU Toroid 1. And uh, this is pertaining to a discussion at uh, overunityresearch.com with GK. Uh, I'll put the thread information in the description. Okay, so what we want to know here is uh, right now what I'm doing is I'm using this uh, speaker magnet that I wound uh, this uh, two coils on. Unfortunately, when I did it originally, they were not in bucking mode, but uh, right now that's not what I'm really looking at. Uh, so what I wanted to know is what is the coupling ability of two coils, one being pulsed by this pulse generator, and uh, the other one, the other coil going to this uh, diode carousel with, with uh, a capacitor. And it's the other side of the capacitor is connected here. And then I have these LEDs that are connected right onto the capacitor over there. And here I just have one little pot, the uh, uh, probe end of this thing for my uh, scope. No negative on there. And uh, so basically what I'm going to do now is I'm going to be pulsing this. I'm at 22 megahertz right now because in the lower range there's not really anything happening. And I'm just going to sweep down here. You can see that I sweep down and I'm going to check the light. See if the light goes on or off. Right now I'm at 9 megahertz. Going up to 22. Nothing. I'm going to try another range. Coming down from uh, 11 megahertz. Going down. Okay, so here I have, here you can see, okay, I'm getting some activity, so we'll just stop there for now. And right now I'm at uh, figure 1, 1.40 1 megahertz. So right now I'm pulsing 1.4 uh, megahertz here. I'm picking up here, and uh, this is what we can see on, this, on, the, uh, on the scope. I'll freeze that. And open it up, bring it in, and you can see that's a two volt divider. Now, if I put that lowest end to any of the lines there, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, it's about 12 volts peak to peak. Okay, so um, I'm just gonna see, maybe I can get well, these are high frequencies, anyways. Okay, so we saw that. So now I know that at 1.40 megahertz, that's what I'm getting is the, uh, the screenshot. Now, so this uh, coupling, the ability of two coils to couple while being wound on a magnet, uh, I'm, I'm a little disappointed because I was hoping I'd get a lot more because this uh, frequency generator can light that up a lot more than that. Uh, now, what I'm thinking is that the uh, the coil, the wire, is I think it's like a 24 gauge uh, wire on that, so I think it's way too thin, and it's wound directly onto the ceramic or, or the or the magnet surface. So I think uh, the magnet is actually hindering the uh, this small amount of copper from being able to respond. To the pulses and to convey it from one to the other. Uh, so that's one thing. Um, I want to talk about uh, half coil syndrome here now that I have a little chance here, just very quick, because I'm going to be doing some succession of videos with this toroid. And uh, as it progresses, the next one I'll do is I'm, I'm going to be taking this winding off now that I have a baseline with this, and I'm going to be putting on some uh, 18 gauge wire on here instead with a little bit of a tape where I wrap around it to keep the wire off the surface of the magnet. But here I want to I want to show you something. So right now at 1.40 megahertz we're getting this much output, which is not that much. Uh, now 
this is basically a resonant point. I mean, you go higher or lower than this point and nothing happens. There's a, a resonance happening in the coil and uh, where the most amount of atoms in this coil are responding to the pulse and this coil here is just basically seeing more atoms responding all respond in, the, in kind now because it can't respond through a core this is not a this is not a regular core here this is a magnet so uh, what happens is here let me do this let me take this negative off and look at that you see as soon as I take the negative off that just went brighter. Now why did I go brighter? Because by taking the negative off the positive pulse can now claim the whole coil. Okay? Since it's claiming the whole coil now this is seeing an on and off change in, gr in a greater amount of these winds which are being translated to these winds and we're getting more output. And it, it really can't be anything else. As soon as I put the negative back on bingo we go down again now so what's happening is this negative when I add it when I put it on the circuit the negative is claiming part of this coil here now and it's never gonna change because this side is not pulsing it's this side this is going on and off now uh, okay so what was I gonna say so this is taking like this part of the coil is negative now it's on the negative side it can't change because it's always connected and this sees that and gives you less output so the uh, what was I gonna say here uh, hold on a second yeah if I take it off now the whole coil is receiving a positive pulse it can only receive, it can't receive anything else, there's only a positive connected to it, and we're at resonance. Resonance doesn't care about anything else but how those atoms in that copper, the nucleus of each one of those copper atoms are now res responding, the ones that can. And at resonance, we always have the least amount of amperage, and that is exactly why, because at resonance, you can have a high number of atoms or nuclei responding to the pulse but the percentage of the total atoms in that copper wire are still very small so you're getting higher voltage but rock dropping uh, amperage and uh, this is half coil syndrome this is what happens so we just keep on running our things like this. Now I'm going to cut the video off and I'm going to put something in series with this coil now, okay? I'll be back. Okay, so let's try and do this again. So here we have that LED is, is uh, lit. We're about 1.4, 1.36 uh, megahertz. Um, okay, I just want to show something that's a little curious. So, um, so I have this wire here, okay? And uh, when I put this on, it goes down, and we can see here that's with it on, that's with it off, and this is with it off, lit. So we're getting a good light now. I took so I took this little drum coil here that I have, just lit wire, 1,650 strands, and uh, one side is just not connected, and the other side. I'm just going to come and uh, touch this on here and look we just got up again look at that okay so we're even going higher now okay so we're back uh, this is a few days later um, so what I did was from where we, we where I left off the other the other day uh, we were at uh, 1.4, 1.45, I'll put this back to 1.4 because that's where I was all the time. We're at 50% uh, percent, uh, uh, duty cycle, 16.5 uh, uh, volts amplitude, uh, milliamps uh, in terms of amps. 
this is a frequency generator. It's not a. It's not. It's not like a heavy-duty pulsing thing. Uh, it's very, very light. Now, uh, so where were we when we left off? I was explaining to you when I put this here. Uh, I added a. Sorry, I added a coil. I added these uh, alligator clips to this coil here. Uh, so it would be a lot easier to connect and disconnect so um, basically right now what I have is I'm putting the negative of the pulse generator back onto this coil and uh, this coil is picking up this very very light light output uh, not very strong um, so I'm gonna take this off we're gonna see there is an increase okay and then I'm gonna put this on and I explained to you why there was the increase okay uh, now I'm gonna put this back on and you can see the only is going brighter so why is it going brighter uh, in terms of logic something is adverse even in an open coil system where the coil ends open right at the end of the coil uh, there might be a situation where when the pulse reaches here there is a reverberation or a uh, uh, an echo coming back in a certain length of distance and when I'm bringing this onto here, I'm pushing the pulse, even though this coil here, that coil is still open. It's not, it's not connected. It's right here. So this, this coil here is not connected. Uh, but I'm still pushing the pulse past the first coil and now into the second coil. So the, the end here that's open is further away from the actual pulsed part which is this and we're getting an increase uh, now what I wanted to do is let's put now the pulse negative onto the end of that coil bingo just dropped all the way back and even even worse uh, not worse but let's do a comparison if you look at that I can grab an image of that and then compare it to that which is negative directly onto the coil or directly onto the other coil okay so uh, so I'm gonna put this back on so this is it. Uh, so, okay, uh, GK, I know I'm going off on this uh, spin conveyance and uh, half coil syndrome thing, but this is part of how I look at everything right now. Uh, and so this coil here, this coil here, the length of it, could be, could be this, which is the two windings or the two outer things of the FTPU so this wire here could actually be the exterior winds you know those two three uh, two three turns per level uh, and uh, it's being used just to pr to, pr to um, enable the coil itself whether this is on a ceramic or a magnet or a, or a ferrite it doesn't matter the coil is the coil we're just seeing this is like this co this core is not really helping anything right now it's just proximity its topology it's where these coils are intersecting mostly on this side here on the inner side okay the most most direct uh, and so it's basically we're looking at these turns here affecting these turns here so uh, I'll leave it at that and I'm gonna come back and uh, do uh, uh, some uh, so okay so <coughs> sorry about that 
Okay, so I'm going to come back and uh, show you the, some results, you know, that, uh, with, uh, with this thing here, which is uh, just a mid-range voice coil that it's going to go right underneath here, right underneath. I mean, this is going to be right over it, and uh, oh, we can see right through the cone there, so that's really nice. Hmm. It's all by resonance light. Okay, so uh, I'll be back.